Hello friends. Well, I hope this will work okay because there's something happening with the camera on my phone and there's some shaking going on and apparently it's something to do with a stabilizer in there. I've uh, found a quick fix kind of stop gap thing on it on online that seems to have taken care of the problem. Hopefully it will record the video okay. Well, we're on our 20, uh, 45th day of lockdown and the restrictions are they're slowly easing them. The children can get out for an hour now and you can tell there's a little bit more activity out in town and we'll see. Everybody's wondering what it will be like as slowly they, they let uh, more and more activity be done outside the house. Okay, well today I want to talk about uh, Manasseh one of the kings of Judah, and like to read a few verses out of the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 33, and start with verse 2, it says, but, did, but he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. Then in verse 9, So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse than the heathen, whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And then verses 11 and 12. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns, and bound him with fetters, and carried him to Babylon. And when he was afflicted, he besought the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. Well... This is Manasseh, and his confinement is mentioned here in, the, in, in this passage. We don't know how long it took, or how long he was confined, but he was taken captive to Babylon. And so, let's look at his story a little bit more in detail. Okay, his, his time away is only mentioned in Chronicles, not in Kings. And uh, Second Chronicles is contemporary... The, the stories are the same as the same, the same time period as first and second kings. But Chronicles focuses only on Judah, the southern kingdom, on David's lineage, and it's more positive in nature than second than first and second kings. And it tends to overlook the worst and highlight the best of what was going on at the time. And it brings many things to light that are never mentioned in the Kings. So there's a lot of information in Chronicles that we don't have <clears throat> in Kings. And uh, interestingly enough, in the, in the case of Manasseh, Kings, the book of Kings, describes the threat and the prophecy from God that he would be punished, but it never records the fulfillment. And Chronicles, on the other hand, doesn't mention the threat or the prophecy, but it does record the fulfillment, so they, they perfectly uh, complement each other. Okay, so Manasseh. <clears throat> Manasseh came to the throne at the age of 12. However, they're pretty sure that he, the first 10 years, he reigned with his father, Hezekiah. He was the 13th king of the southern kingdom, and that, meant, that means that after him there were only six before the, the southern kingdom went, uh, was destroyed or conquered. And he reigned 55 years, the longest reign of any king in northern or the southern kingdom of Israel. So, um, very, very interesting because of what kind of king he was, and yet he reigned for over five decades. Okay, so he ignored his father's faith, rejected it completely, he ignored the repentance that his father had shown when the issue with the pride came up and so forth. He ignored all of that. He rejected the instruction from Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. And in fact, tradition says that he had Isaiah sawn in, in two. He murdered him, uh, martyred Isaiah. Um, so... Interestingly as well, the last recorded words of Hezekiah. Now, Hezekiah was a great king, his father. Was one of the best kings that Judah had, but he definitely wasn't perfect. And at the very last thing Isaiah told him after the princes of Babylon had come, in that story there, 
Isaiah told him that his descendants would be eunuchs and captives in Babylon. And the very last recorded words from Hezekiah are basically, the word of the Lord is good, at least there will be peace and truth in my days. That was the last thing he said. And I can't help but think that Manasseh heard that. What an attitude. I don't care about my descendants, at least things will be okay while I'm alive. Anyway, Manasseh had no shame at all. He, he loved idolatry. He brought in, he, he, well, he fomented Baal worship. He carved idol, he put carved idols in the very temple. He sacrificed sons to the fiery idol of Moloch, uh, or however you say that, Moloch, which was unthinkable uh, cruelty. He worshipped the heavenly bodies. He, he, he went to witchcraft and sorcery, consulted mediums and, and all the occult. And so this was Manasseh, the king of Judah, the son of a good king. He was brutal. He shed tons of innocent blood in Jerusalem, the Bible says. And he did more evil than the wicked nations that were around the country. So this was, this was Manasseh. The Bible says that the king of Assyria came, and uh, it was either, and I'm going to try and pronounce these right, it was either, either the king Eshar Hayden in the 7th BC, or his son Ashur Bani Pal, the best way I can pronounce them, uh, son, and, son and father, kings of Assyria. Both of them mention Manasseh in their inscriptions as a vassal king who paid tribute to them. And the Bible says that in his confinement, when he was taken to Babylon, he was taken in, the, the King James says, thorns and fetters. Basically, these are, it's, it's hooks and chains is the idea. And these are very common in the inscriptions and the artwork of that day. The, the conquering kings would humiliate the kings that they had, that they had conquered, and they would pull them along with chains and hooks in their, in their lips, or nose, uh, mainly lips, I think, and it was a way of absolutely shaming those kings, and he was taken that way to Babylon, so he was completely humiliated by them. So, uh, he was taken to Babylon, though they were Assyrian kings, because there is plenty of evidence that they resided in both cities, and so happened that they took Manasseh to Babylon. And then comes the amazing thing. <laughs> Manasseh, the Bible says, humbled himself greatly, and he prayed to God. And God, faithful to his character, heard him and answered his prayer. Why? Because as Psalm 51 says, he will not despise the contrite and broken heart. And this incredibly cruel and wicked king broke down and literally humbled himself and repented. His repentance was genuine. The text makes it very clear. And then even more amazing, he was returned to Jerusalem, and he was brought back. And after that, he got into building projects, but he seriously cleansed out the temple and the entire city of Jerusalem. So there was a true repentance and a change there. And he also showed personal devotion and gratitude to God for having brought him back to Jerusalem and having, having forgiven him, I guess you could say. Well... Some observations, sometimes evil people live, and evil, evil rulers live a long time while God's people, while godly people, are cut short and suffer. That's just the truth about it, and it happens in the Bible. God included Manasseh's story for an obvious reason. No matter how sinful and how depraved a person is, if he humbles himself and genuinely repents and turns to God, God will listen. However, some people think that now nah, they can live like the devil and then do what Manasseh did. 
Oh no, that is so dangerous. You're playing with your heart because we never know what our heart is going to do down the road. The worst thing that can happen to a person is that the Holy Spirit will leave them alone. And then the heart hardens and the person who thought, oh, later on I'll repent. No, his heart becomes completely uh, hardened against repentance and he can't even control it. So it's very, very dangerous to play that game, if you could call it a game. So the final thought here with Manasseh, his confinement, his repentance and coming back. The thought is uh, about the grace of God. Amazing incredible grace of God. Paul said in 1 Timothy 1.15 that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And he saw himself as the very worst of the worst. And Manasseh was definitely one of those worst of the worst in the Old Testament. God never turns away from a truly repentant sinner because he knows the heart. What a God we love and serve, and may we remember this truth. Uh, and praise Him for His grace, and be careful to guard our heart. Okay, well, that's the, that's the lesson from Manasseh, that very wicked king, who humbled himself, and God had mercy on him. God bless you. Have a great day. Goodbye.